Law enforcement officers put their lives on the line every day to preserve our security and peace that our nation enjoys. It is wrong that many of these same officers are denied the basic American rights of collective bargaining for wages, hours, and safe working conditions. To do our jobs effectively and safely, we need a seat at the table. We need to be able to discuss response issues, engage in meaningful dialogue about the equipment, staffing, and processes required to protect the jurisdictions which we so proudly serve. I spent my entire career in a state that did not allow collective bargaining. Officers could be fired on a whim, and many have been. Their salaries were set without any input from the rank and file officers. Decisions were made by management about equipment, about our lives, without any meaningful input from our members. I can tell you from coming from a right to work state right across the river, the difficulties that we have had over the years in trying to increase our members' pay, benefit, and their safety on the job. Fairfax County is one of the most affluent um, counties in the, in the United States. We have a population of a million people, however, our police officers are the lowest paid in the region because everybody else in the region has collective bargaining. As a result of that, we are very challenged to, to get the best and the brightest to apply to our agency. And it is true where there is no dialogue is where we have problems. We can look in any, any walk of our life. When, when, when we don't have the ability to communicate to one another, we run into the walls. Every day these men and women behind us put their lives on the line to keep our families, our homes, and our workplaces safe and secure. They frequently are forced to make crucial life or death decisions on a dime. If they can be entrusted to do all of this, then certainly they can be entrusted with the collective bargaining rights. These men and women behind me every day put on a uniform, put on a badge, strap a gun to their hip, or put some boots on to go into the raging fires. I think it's very important that those men and women be given the right to speak for themselves, no matter where they live. H.R. 980 extends to firefighters, police officers, correction officers, and other public safety officers the basic right to discuss workplace issues with their employers. I think this is a great bill. It's a great opportunity for the public safety sector in America. Two-thirds of being the firm of the rules are suspended. The bill is passed without objection. The motion reconsidered laid upon the table. Today, the House achieved an historic victory on behalf of the brave men and women who valiantly protect Americans every day, our police, firefighters, correction officers, and emergency services personnel. And this legislation is more than just history. It's finally the United States Congress, in a bipartisan fashion, seeing that a group of unbelievable workers who are dedicated to their communities and the citizens every hour of every day, who never second guess what they're going to do when the bells hit or an alarm sounds, they're going to respond, are finally afforded what every other worker in this country has basically enjoyed for almost eight decades. And I want to say today in Congress, you not only made a lot of people that do our job safer, you made America safer.